Okay guys, so today we are going to build from scratch a real estate property listing website from A to Z, from start to finish, step by step, one by one. And it doesn't require any coding whatsoever. I'm going to take you by the hand and walk you through all the steps one by one. And we're going to end up with a beautiful website like this one here, like you see behind me. This is the homepage. You'll have a contact form where can people send you inquiries. You will receive that via email and can reply to them. We have a beautiful hero section here with a compelling heading. If we scroll down the page, you can see we have our featured properties right here, beautifully designed, a beautiful layout. And then a very professional about a section just underneath it with your picture here, very professional looking picture and a nice description of your business right there. And then we have our main listing section here, all our properties being listed, properties for sale, properties for rent. It could be houses, could be buildings, could be offices, could be lands, whatever you want. They all be displayed right here automatically and they all dynamically linked throughout the whole website. Uh, and through the different pages as well. Now, if we scroll down, obviously you can display the type of properties you have available, like apartment, houses, offices. It could be bungalows, it could be detached house, semi-detached house, it could be lands, a plot of lands, whatever you have available, you can display them here right into your homepage uh, for anyone to see. And then finally, uh, contact details as well. Obviously, this website comes with more than one page. I'm going to show you how to tweak this around, make it your own and uh, change everything the way you want it to personalize it to your own taste and preferences. And then we have a beautiful About Us page as well, as you can see with a beautiful backsplash picture like this with a cityscape and everything, a beautiful menu bar, a nice uh, presentation of yourself as a director of the company, for instance. Very nice indeed. And maybe a few numbers to display the amount of properties you have available, that you have sold, etc. And finally, the, the icing on the cake, the properties page, as you will see, absolutely gorgeous and very professional. These are all your properties listed one by one. The, you can narrow down the searches for sale, for rent, by area, by neighborhoods, by prices, by amount of rooms, etc. You can narrow down the searches and everything. And if everyone was to click on any of those properties, they'll go straight to the page itself, as you can see, with all the details about that property, with a beautiful picture slider, as you can see immediately there. If you scroll down, you have even more details about the property, uh, Google Maps as well, and the agent in charge of the sale of the property. And if you go back up here, you can see you even have features. You can add video and you can even add a 360 degree virtual tour. So absolutely fantastic. So let's go through all the steps one by one. And for this, I've put together a list of all the steps and all the tasks we're going to undertake and take care of. So this is the list. So this is actually hosted on my website and I'm going to put the link in the description below. So feel free to go to that page and to use it when you're building and creating your own real estate website. So these are all the steps we're going to take care of. As you can see, this is broken down in three different sections. So we have the initial setup. We have the customization and finally all the final tweaks before launching your website and before going live. So as you can see, all these steps are listed here one by one and we're going to take care of them one by one, of course. And as you do so yourself, feel free to use that page as well. And once you're done with each and every steps, all we have to do is just tick them off the list just like that. And as you can see, now we know that our hosting is taken care of. And then the next step is to register our free domain name. And then we, we can tick that off as well as we go along. So again, this is this page. I'm going to put the link in the description below. As you can see, this is hosted on my website. So feel free to use it uh, for your own personal use. It's totally free of charge, of course. Now you can print it as well. If you right click on this page and click print, if you want it to, you can have it printed on a sheet of paper. You can print it at home and then tick those boxes as you go along. Right, so let's get started.
So the first step is to take care of our hosting. So for this, we're going to go on my website here, Mr. Web Reviews. So mrwebreviews.com and you can either go into the address bar and type in forward slash hosting, just like this, as you can see, forward slash hosting, or you can click on the link here that says hosting in the menu bar. And I'm also going to, of course, include the link in the description below. So feel free to use any of those methods. They will all bring you to the same place anyway. So let's click on this now. There you go. So as you can see, we are now on the Hostinger website. So this is basically a co-branded page that I have with Hostinger. What I've done, guys, I've negotiated uh, some special rates, some special discounts for you guys with Hostinger. So basically here, as you can see on screen, you can get up to 80% off the cost of the hosting. Normally, you get free domain name, free SSL certificate, and free Cloudflare, which is absolutely amazing indeed. And I'm also going to give you a special coupon code in the next step, mrwebreviews.com, which will give you access to an additional 7% discount at checkout. So all together, great savings to be made indeed. So Hostinger basically is where I host all my websites because they're fast, they're reliable, they provide outstanding support as well because with the hosting company, obviously, it's when you run into trouble because it does happen, let's face it, uh, they're not perfect. Uh, but the response time is absolutely perfect and very fast indeed. And also the pricing structure that they offer, they are the cheapest, the most competitive on the market, to be honest. And when you, when you can combine actually both of these together, reliability and pricing, we have a winning uh, solution obviously you know which is the case here with Hostinger so let me show you very quickly all the different uh, plans we can choose from now we have three different plans available here we have the single we have the premium and the business so what's the difference between those three different plans as you can see the premium one is the most popular one and there is a good reason for that I'm going to explain you in a few seconds so if let me scroll down a little bit there you go as you can see, apart from the price, so this one is $0.99, cent, uh, this one is $2.19 per month and $3.99, so which is absolutely extremely affordable already, as you can see, price-wise, absolutely spot on. Now, what's the difference, again, between those uh, three different uh, plans? So this one here, the single, as you can glean from its name, is for one website only. So you can only host one website on this one. So if you're planning to build more than one website, this might not be suitable for you. Maybe you'd want to get this one instead. As you can see, those two, 100 websites. So it's almost unlimited, isn't it? Now, as you can see here, the storage space is 30 gig on SSD drive. So SSD drive is the fastest hard drive on the market, which means that your website will be lightning fast to load and very uh the performance will be absolutely perfect as you can see so this one is 30 gig of uh, storage space this one 100 this one 200 now 30 gig of storage space is plenty to be honest so this is not a uh, a factor you, you need to consider because before you reach 30 gig you'll need a lot of information now this one here this is the most important bit this one you don't get a free domain and you don't get google ads credit so here the value of the free domain is $8.99 so if you factor that in already just that alone makes this plan the premium plan uh, more advantageous and a better value than these two obviously because this one is 99 cents multiplied by 12 plus 8.99 and you don't have the google ads credits to promote your website so all together this plan as you can see is the most advantageous now also, as you can see, this one, the single, you can only have one email account. So if you're creating a website with this, you have your domain name.com. You can only create one email, for instance, info at your domain.com or sales at your domain.com. Now, if you have more than one email required uh, for your business, this might not be suitable. Again, this one, for instance, the premium one, has free email so you can create as many emails you can have info at sales at your name at your sales teams at whatever you want you know all of them 
Now, again, all these plans offer free SSL certificate. So what's an SSL certificate is the padlock here next to the web address. As you can see, we have a padlock right here, which indicates uh, and shows to your visitors that your website is safe and secure, especially if you want to have online payments and transactions made online and also uh, transmitting information through the Internet. So because your real estate, you might have sensitive information being transferred through your website or so on. This is very important indeed. So for the sake of our tutorial here, we're going to go ahead with the premium plan, which is the which is the most popular one. So let's go ahead with this. And all we have to do now is click on this. So click select. There you go. And in the next step here, we have to choose our billing cycle. So from here, you can select between those four different options. So you have one month. So if you just want to try things out, you can select just one month. That's absolutely fine. And then you can renew or uh, go on a pay as you go plan if you wish. That's all the same. Now, bear in mind, this is more uh, expensive, obviously, because you are only locked in for a month. So this is not advantageous for hosting, obviously, you know, as you can see, you can select 12 months, 24 months and 48 months. So 48 months. $2.19 per month compared to $10.99 for one month. So factor that in as well. And also bear in mind that you have to pay the setup fee of $4.99, which is free with any of those three uh, plans afterwards. So if you select 12 months, 24 months or 48 months, there is no setup fee either. So let's say we were to select 12 months. As you can see, the cost would be $71.88. And if we scroll down, as you can see, it says save 45%. So let's scroll down and let's have a quick look. So normally it would cost you $131.88. You get free SSL, free domain registration, free Cloudflare and setup is free, as we mentioned. And 45% discount, which is $60 of discount. So amazing value. Obviously, they have to add taxes on top. So which brings us to a total of $88.41. Now, if you wanted to go with 24 months or two years period, so normally 71. So let's say 70 times two, $140 would cost you normally for two years compared to one year. This is logical, isn't it? Look at this. It's only $90.96. So if you double this billing cycle, you don't double the, the amount owed, basically. It's actually amazing. From 71, it's only an extra $20 to go for two years period, as you can see. So normally 140 would be, it's only $90. Now $90, 90 times two is 180. So it should normally be 180, you agree with me? It's only 105. So it's only an extra $15 to get four years of hosting all included. So this is absolutely amazing. So for the sake of our tutorial here, we're just gonna go with 12 months. So $71.88. And if we scroll down here, we can select our me payment methods. So we have credit card, PayPal, coin payments. So coin payments, it's all those virtual currencies like uh, Bitcoin and all of them. And then you have Google Play, uh, Pay as well. So let's scroll down a little bit. And now, very, very interesting indeed. I'm going to give you a promo code right here. It's going to give you an extra 7% discount. So, okay. So we got... 45% discount here, so $60 of uh, uh, discount, $60 off our amount. So we are we are at the moment $88.41. So here you see we have, have you a coupon code? Yes. So click on this and you're going to type in Mr. Web Reviews, all in capital letters like this. And then you're going to click on the plus sign right here. And as you can see, we saved roughly another $6 on the amount. So this is great savings to be made, as you can see. And now we can proceed to the next step. All we have to do is click Submit Secure Payment and click Next. So there you go. Because I selected PayPal as my, my payment method, I'm redirected to a pay, PayPal payment page. But regardless of the options you selected, all you have to do now is just basically go through the checkout process. And now we can go back to our to-do list and take this one off. This one is sorted out. 
So once you have actually registered and gone through the checkout process, you will receive a couple of emails from Hostinger and one of them will contain a, li a link to the H panel. So normally it's called C panel, but because it's Hostinger and their name start with the H, they call it H panel. So now what we have to do is to log in into our H panel and we're going to take care of registering our domain name and set up our hosting, all these steps here. So let's do this now. So we go back to our hosting page and as you can see, you have a login button. So just click on this now. So you're going to put in your credentials. So the email address with which uh, you registered and your password. And then you can simply click on login. So here we are now. So from here, we can claim our free domain. As you can see this section here. So all we have to do basically is to click on claim domain. So what's a domain name exactly? So when you go on google.com, this is the address uh, you use actually to reach the google.com uh, website. And it's the same with amazon.com, netflix.com or mrwebreviews.com. If you type in any of those names in the address bar right here, it will bring you to the website. So this is what a domain name is for. So let's go and register this now. So all we have to do basically is click claim domain. And as you can see here, you can type in your domain name. So you can select different extensions. So you, you have .com, as you can see, you can have .shop, .tech, if you're running a tech shop, uh, .website, .host, .info, etc. But for the sake of our tutorial here, and obviously for real estate website, uh, .com is probably the best suited extension. Now, all you have to do basically is type in your domain here. So whatever it is that you want, and then click claim domain. So now bear in mind, uh, .com is the most common one, the most uh, popular extension. So your domain name might not be available immediately. You might have to go through a different, a few different options, you know. So let's say if you're real estate based in Atlanta, you might type in real estate Atlanta or Atlanta real estate or real estate in Atlanta and try different uh, options. Try to keep it as short as possible. Obviously, you know, it's always better to have a shorter URL and make it as obvious and easy for people to remember as well. So try to keep it to register domain name that's catchy and easy to remember. Okay, so after this, all you have to do is click claim domain. Okay, now that we have our domain name registered, we're going to the next step, which is setting up our hosting. So as you can see here, it says set up premium shared hosting and you have a button here that says set up. I have two of them here because I have a few different hosting plans, obviously for all my tutorials, but you'll only have one. So don't worry, whatever shows up here, just click on it. So all we do now is to click set up. And this is going to bring us nicely to the next step. As you can see here, follow the guided setup and your website will be live in just a few minutes. So let's click start now. And here you need to select the domain name. So the domain name we just registered uh, in the previous step. So Atlanta real estate or real estate Atlanta.com, whichever it is you select it, you select it here. So normally it should show up automatically here. If not, you can always click the drop down uh, menu and go and select it manually and then click select. And which way do you want to go? So you can see we have two options here, build a new website or migrate my website. We're not going to select either of them. We're going to click the skip. I will start from scratch because this is what we're going to do. We're going to start from scratch. And then finally, all we have to do here is to click finish setup and we'll be all done already. As you can see, very easy indeed. Okay, so we're nearly there now. So let's go back to our list. As you can see, we can tick this one off, register our free domain, that's done, and set up our hosting, that's done. So now we're gonna create an email address. So let's go back here now. And if we scroll down, once you've done with those two steps, you will have a section like this that says hosting. That means that your hosting is ready and we can actually use it now to create our website, set up our email addresses and everything. So. All we have to do now from this step is just to click either on the domain name itself. So here you, you will have atlantarealestate.com. In my case for our tutorial, it's mrwebreviewstutorials.com. So we're just gonna use this one for now. We can either click on manage or click on the domain name itself. So let's click on this now. 
and this is bringing us to the H panel. So from here, you have all the options to take care of your website, your hosting, your emails, statistics, passwords, upgrade, everything is in here. So lots and lots of options, but don't worry, we're only going to use a few options here. So our aim now is to create an email address. So all you have to do, as you can see, we just scroll down and you have a subsection here that says email and we're going to click on email accounts. So as you can see here, if you scroll down, you can create a new email account. So all we have to do basically is type in the email address. So as you can see at the moment, I have one registered already. I'm just going to delete this quickly. So let's say you wanted to create info at uh, your domain name.com. So all you have to do is type in info, type in a password, and then click create. That's it. Simple as. I told you it's going, it was going to be easy. Very easy indeed. And all we have to do now is click create. It's going to take a few moments to set it up. And there you go. Just like that, we have an email address set up. Now we have info at mrwebreviewstutorials.com. So this could be anything you want. Obviously, this is unlimited at the moment on this account. So you could have info at sales at your name at whichever you want. Hello at, for instance, any of these, of course. So that's it. This is how we set up our email address. So you can take this one off back to our list, create email address. And now we're going to install WordPress. So for this, we're going to go back to our dashboard. So click on dashboard now. And if we scroll down, as you can see, we have WordPress here, we have order, accounts, emails, domains, and websites. So underneath this tab, this is how we're going to install WordPress. So all we do basically is click in auto installer. So click on this icon here. And as we scroll down, as you can see, I have a few websites here already uh, set up, as you can see, but you only have one domain name yourself normally, which should be Atlanta uh, Real Estate, for instance, or yourdomainname.com. So what we're going to do now is click on this here. We can see we have WordPress or we can select WooCommerce, Joomla and others. We are only interested in WordPress at the moment. So this is what we're going to install. So what's the difference between those two, you might wonder? Well, basically, this one is WordPress on its own, which is our CMS platform we're going to use. Or you can install WooCommerce plus WordPress. So basically, WooCommerce is a plugin you can add on WordPress to make it an e-commerce website. But for our tutorial here, we don't need it. So all we're going to install is just WordPress. So all we do now is click Select. And as you can see, we have our domain name here. So MrWebReviewsTutorials.com. So what we want to do first is to select this drop down menu and select HTTPS. So HTTPS is very important is just to uh, make your website SSL secure. So as I said before, have this padlock here just to tell your visitors that your website is safe to use and and uh, secure, obviously. So you're going to create a username here. So I'm just going to put Mr. Web reviews here for our tutorial mr web reviews and you're going to type in a password so I'll try to have something that you can remember obviously but it has to be uh, secure regardless and then here type in the title the the website title so basically if it's atlanta uh, real estate you would type in atlanta real estate or your domain name whichever it is your company name your business name on the name of the website so in our instance here is going to be mr web reviews very simple and now we have a few more options here leave everything as is don't touch this it's absolutely fine the way it is now we want to make sure that our website is always up to date and uh, to the latest version as well so we're going to tick this box here always update to the latest available version and this is going to increase, obviously, uh, performances and also security because you want to make sure that your website is safe and secure from hackers and all these threats. And then all we have to do after this, so let's double check everything is OK. So we have HTTPS, we have our username, password, title, and we have the update setup. All we have to do now is just click Install. 
Now, bear in mind, this is going to take a few moments, obviously, depending on how fast your internet connection is. So don't be anxious. Let it run. Uh, just don't close the window, obviously. Let it run. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pause the video now because it's going to take a few moments and I'll meet you guys when it's completed. Okay, guys, so WordPress is installed now. So bear in mind, uh, there is no notification or they won't let you know that the installation is completed. Basically, they will bring you back to the screen, which means that WordPress is installed. So we can go back to our list now and that's it and take this one. So install WordPress done. So the initial setup, everything is sorted out. As you can see, this was very easy indeed. So next step now is customization. So for this, we go back to our H panel and we're going to go back to our dashboard. Click again on dashboard once more. And as you can see, we have edit website right here. So this is what you want to click. So now you want to make sure before you go ahead that this box is ticked. So it might be disabled at the time when you uh, load this page and you want to make sure you want to force HTTPS. So click on this and make sure it turns green, which means that you have your SSL certificate fully installed on your website. And then from here, all we have to do is click edit website. And this will bring us to our WordPress dashboard. Now this is going to take a few moments again. And as you can see, here we are now. Welcome to your WordPress dashboard. So from here, let me show you exactly how this works. So basically WordPress is divided in two sections. On the left hand side, you have the menu. And on the right hand side here, all of this, this is the preview of what you're working on. So let's say if you were to click on pages, let me click on this just to show you quickly. We have all our pages basically, you know. So if I click on appearance, it's everything that's got to do with the appearance and the look of your website uh, with the theme, the templates and all that. And then we have our plugins. So if I click on plugins, it will display all our plugins. So all of these are different parts of the website and we're going to go through all of them one by one. And I'm going to explain you each role and uh, what's the, the functions of all of these. So basically the first step we're going to do, let's go back here. So we're going to go into general settings. So what are the general settings we go into here and we're going to click on general. So basically it's just to make sure that your site title and your tagline are com properly configured. So as you can see, we have our site title here, which says Mr. Web Reviews, but you might have a tagline, for instance. So for myself, I'm just going to put free. No, because we're going to do a tutorial here, I'm going to put real estate website uh, tutorial, just like that. But here you would put your own tagline, obviously. This is important because when people will look your website later on on Google and all that, this is one of the things that will show up just next to your name. So make sure this is uh, clear and punchy maybe a little bit just to make sure that people uh, will notice who you are. So you want to make sure that the administration email address is correct as well and that it will reach you because everything that's happening on your website, you'll get a notification and you want to make sure that this is going to reach you. So let's say if you have your emails on your phone and you have your Gmail account, maybe you want to put your Gmail account right here. And once you're happy enough, click on Save Changes. So we can take, take this one off. This is done. Now we're going to take care of the permalinks. So let's go back here now and we're going to settings again and we're going to click on permalinks. So basically when you go on the website, as you can see here, we have our website, Mr. Web Reviews Tutorials, forward slash WP admin, forward slash options, etc. etc. So this is the web address as you see it. So you want this to be search engine friendly and you want it to be easy for uh, your visitors as well to identify where they are on your website. So what we do with generally is to select the post name, which is usually the best and the simplest one to see. As you can see, it will display HTTPS, uh, your domain name.com forward slash. And let's say if it's the about us page, it will simply display about hyphen us. If it's the contact us page, it will display contact hyphen us. So anyone who's on your website can identify very easily and very simply where they are on your website. And then after this, we just click save. 
And there you go, just like that, we have that one sorted. Next step, plugins, delete some, add new ones. So very important step here. So let's go into our plugins now. And for this, we're going to click on plugins. And as you can see, these are the plugins installed on our WordPress installation at the moment. So what are plugins, you may wonder? Okay, so WordPress is the software, let's put it this way, that we are using to build our website. And plugins are additional pieces of software that are linked to our website that will allow us to perform different functions, different tasks, and have different things uh, working in conjunction with our WordPress installation. So, for instance, we could have a, an e-commerce extension. These are extension, if you wish. So, all these extensions will allow us to do different things. So, if you wanted to create a form, we're going to install a plugin to create forms. If you wanted to have an SEO and optimize all your pages for SEO friendly, you, uh, for Google and all that, you can have an SEO plugin and so on. So, basically, all these plugins uh, will allow us to build our website without coding and without programming. So as you can see here, we have a few uh, installed already. So we have the Lightspeed Cache. So with Hostinger by default, they have a high performance page uh, caching uh, to, uh, uh, plugin, as you can see here. So at the moment, we want to deactivate it because as we work on the website, this is going to... Uh, prevent us from seeing immediately the changes that we're working on. So what we're going to do now is just deactivate that. There you go. And the next step is just to delete those two. So we've asked Kimet, Anti-Spam and Hello Dolly. So just click on those two, tick those two boxes, bulk action, and then delete. So we're going to get rid of those two. We don't need them all together. And so that's it. Gone. And then next step is to install a new plugin, two actually. So we're going to click Add New. There you go. And we're going to install a maintenance plugin. So maintenance, just type in, in the search box here, maintenance, like I did. And as you can see, the very first one here from the Web Factory Limited, this is the one that we're going to install. So let's click Install. And then all we have to do then is to click Activate. There you go. And as you can see, we have now we have an added tab here in the menu section which says Maintenance. So what we're going to do is just click on this now. And make sure that the maintenance is on. So what is a maintenance page? Well, basically, as you work on your website and you do all these changes, you don't want anyone to land on your website and see maybe a messy page and all of that, maybe with broken codes. And, and basically, this is what a maintenance page is for. So basically, if you are working on your website like we do here, let me right click here and show you. We can access our website. So this is what our website looks like at the moment. So we are able to see the content of our website as we work on it and we are logged in as an admin. Now, if I use this URL here, control C, and if I open that in an incognito page, Now, this is what anyone else from the outside world who will type in your web, uh, web address will see. They will see that the maintenance mode is on. So basically, you can keep your privacy uh, uh, while you're working on your website and make sure that no one is going to uh, try to visit your website during construction. OK, so this is one thing sorted. So now we can go and tick those boxes. And let's continue uh, to install our plugins. So let's go to plugins again and then add new. And this is the most important plugin we need. So here we're going to type in essential real estate, just like that in the search box. And this is the one that we want to install. So real estate, this is what the, the plugin basically that will allow us to upload properties and all the settings uh, that we need for that. So all we need now to do, basically click install now, uh, install now, yeah. So there you go, nearly there. And all we have to do now is just to click activate. There you go. So that's all done already. 
As you can see, we're now presented with a new page, which is Setup Wizard Instruction. So thank you for installing Essential Real Estate. And again, this plugin is free of charge, totally free. And all the tools you're going to use on this website are free as well. So WordPress is free. All the themes, the theme we're going to use is free. Astra theme is free. And this uh, is free as well. So all together, absolutely fantastic. So we can skip this and set up the plugin manually. We don't want to do that. You want to make sure you're going to click on continue to page setup. Otherwise, you'll have to set up everything manually and it's very tedious. Believe me. So you want to make sure you click on this one. Click on continue to page setup. And as you can see here, we have all these fields pre-filled automatically for us. So basically, the title of new properties it will be new property, my properties, my profile, my invoices, and so on. So basically, all these default settings are absolutely fine. And all we have to do now is just click Create Selected Pages. There you go. All done in just a few clicks. So this is very simple to install indeed, as you can see. So that's it for the plugins. This is our real estate plugin uh, installed as well. So we can tick that off now our list. So plugins, delete some, this is done. And we have the maintenance mode done, this is done. So next step is to install our theme. So back to our website, as you can see, this is what our website looks like at the moment. So it's not very appealing at all. It's very basic. So what do we do? How do we improve this? What we do is basically we install a theme. So a theme basically is a pre-built template that we can use and tweak around. So this is going to save us a lot of time. Obviously, we could build it from scratch here. We're using this uh, theme already, but there is a pre-built theme and templates that we can use that saves us hours upon hours of hard work, obviously, you know. So all we have to do basically now from here, we go into appearances and then themes. And then we're going to click on add a new. And in the search box here, you want to type in Astra. So Astra, as you can see, this is a free theme as well. So as you can see, if you hover on top now, it will show you two new buttons, install and preview. So just hover on top. And all we have to do now is to click install. And the installation has started now. So now again, please bear in mind, this is going to take a few moments depending on how fast your internet connection is. So don't be anxious and let it run. It will take just a few moments. All right, so that's done already. And all we have to do is to click activate. There you go. And the next step, you want to hover on top again. And as you can see with theme details, so click on this. And then you have that small option here that says Astra options. Click on that next. And as you can see, we have this option here by the side that says import starter template. So as I mentioned before, there is a library of starter templates available. So basically, these are pre-built uh, templates that we can use. And that's going to save us a lot, a lot of time. And they all look very, very professional, as you will see. So the next step, basically, we click on Install Importer Plugin, just this one here. Just click on that. Activating. There you go. And now we have to choose our page builder. So what's a page builder? Basically, because there's no coding involved, we want to tweak and change our page to change things around. You want to add text, maybe title, maybe an image and so on. And instead of using HTML coding, CSS and all that, we have a drag and drop page builder. So you can choose among four different options. So we have Elementor, Beaver Builder, Gutenberg and Breezy. So they're all equally good. But for our tutorial here and from experience, Elementor is the best one of them. So let's click Elementor. And from here, you are presented with all these different templates, as you can see. So you can see they all look very professional, very modern looking. Uh, the layout is fantastic. And it's uh, they, look, they look very professional, all of them, to be honest. You know, there's not one I wouldn't pick, to be honest. They're absolutely great. This is why I love Astra theme so much. Now, if you look at some of them, they have a tag like this, a label that says agency. So these are premium 
themes, premium templates. So you'll have to pay the get the premium version for this. So again, it's really up to you. You can choose any of these. It's uh, they, they all look fantastic. You don't have to get the premium one. As I said, you can do all of this uh, free of charge. Now, if you really love one of them, you can always get the premium version. As always, I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanted to. So basically, let's go back to our uh, top here. And then we're going to just click on free for now. So I'll just click on free because I like free stuff. What can you do? And we're going to type in real estate. Real estate. There you go. As you can see, we only have the choice among two of them. So now if I wanted to select a not free one, but all of them, as you can see, we have another one here. So it's just three of them that would be suitable for real estate regardless. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to select the free one and I'm going to click on this one here. And as you can see, this is the one that we that I showed you at the beginning of this video. And if you scroll down, this is the actual page, you know. And as you can see, we have home, about us, properties, agents, frequently asked questions and contact. So all we have to do now, just one click, we're going to import all of this on our website. So all you have to do basically is click import complete site and the import will start. So as you can see here, one nice step, they're asking you for feedback. So feel free to fill this out. Next, and then you can skip the next step or you can uh, submit it. It's really up to you. I'm going to skip it for now. So as you can see, you selected website, your selected website is being imported. Now, bear in mind, this can take up to two, three minutes again. So what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to pause the video right now and I'll meet you when it's completed. So there you go, guys, as you can see, imported successfully. So our website is imported now. So let's have a quick look at our website, what it looks like. So that's what it used to look like, as you can see, very basic and not very appealing at all. Now, if we refresh this, let's quick refresh. And as you can see, we now have our website exactly the way I showed you initially. So as you can see, if we scroll down, we have all our properties about us, the listing. So everything has been imported and ready for us to tweak around. So obviously, as I've said previously, this is saving us a ton of time because we don't have to recreate to create all of this uh, step by step, obviously, you know, we could do it. Of course, if you have time at hand, you can do your own stuff and create it uh, from scratch. But again, it's so much easier to work from something that's already existing and just tweak it around to make it our own. So let's go and tick that box now. Install theme. That's done. So our next step is our essential real estate. So let's go back to our WordPress dashboard. We can close this now. There you go. So our essential real estate, as you can see, there's a few tabs that, that have been added here. So we have uh, real estate options. If you scroll down with our properties, agents, packages, user packages, invoices, and even a transaction log. So all these tabs here are related to the same plugin. Uh, the real estate uh, op uh, plugin here. So basically, this is what we're going to use now to build our website, our real estate website, and create our property listing that's attached to it. So let's go ahead and discover all these different options now. So from here, we're going to click on properties. And as you see, when, once we click on this, we have a drop down menu with different options. As you can see, we have all properties, add new, property type, property status, features, label, and then all the location like country, neighborhood, city, town, and province. So as you can see here, this is very comprehensive indeed. So we'll have to set up each and every one of them. So before you can upload a property, we'll have to set these things up, obviously. So depending on where you are in the world, depending on which territory you cover and uh, region, uh, You'll have to set this up based on your own requirement, of course. So let's say if you were based in Ireland and you want to do the whole country, maybe. Maybe you are an estate agent who's established nationwide. 
So first thing is to actually uh, define which country you're in. So we're going, to, we're going to click on country first. So I'm going to select Ireland for now. So I just click on Ireland. There you go. Now, if you're anywhere in the world, select your country and then scroll down and then save. So this is our country setup. Now you can select different neighborhoods, uh, city and towns, provinces or state. So provinces, states, uh, probably, and then we can narrow it down. So let's start with provinces and state. Maybe uh, we're going to select, maybe we have Dublin. And as you can see, the country is Ireland. So you can uh, put a description if you want to. It's up to you. You don't have to. It's not mandatory. So we're just going to add Dublin here. We're going to add Cork. We're going to add Galway, maybe. So there are 32 counties in Ireland. I could go on, you know, I could put uh, County Leitrim maybe here. Uh, sorry, County Leitrim. I'll add another few. County Roscommon. And maybe County Sligo. There you go. So just for now, just to give you an idea, okay? And then you add your provinces or counties or whichever, uh, uh, depending on how your uh, country is divided, obviously, in different sections and areas. So provinces or states, this would be it. And then we have city and town. So now if you want to narrow down the searches, for instance, from County uh, Dublin, we, it could be or even County Leitrim or County Roscommon. It could be divided in the main cities or main towns uh, related to that place. You can do it as well. So let's say I'm going to go County Leitrim here. I'm just going to go and click on this or city and town. And as you can see, you have province or state here, as you can see. So we can divide that and break it down in smaller uh, areas, basically. So I'm going to put here Carrick on Shannon. And this will be part of County Leitrim. So I'm just going to add this. So we'll have as well Mohill, which is part of County Leitrim as well. Uh, we could have maybe Drumshanbo, which is part of County Leitrim. Yeah, why not? So let's let's have it this way for now. I'm just going to add three for now, okay? So we have our country, which is Ireland, divided in 32 different counties. And each county may have its, its main cities and towns and areas obviously now if you have neighborhoods i suppose maybe somewhere in america uh, it could be the bronx that's the only one that comes to mind that's the only one i can think of sorry <laughs> but anyways you could have different neighborhoods as well like this so i have no uh, example here to put in but if you had one you can create one here and uh, allow your visitors to narrow down their searches even down to the neighborhood so as you can see, we have the country, we have province, we have city and town, and the neighborhood. So this is everything for what's got to do with uh, the area and uh, the region and the location of the property. Now we have our property type, we have status and feature and label as well. So let's go with property type. So property type basically is what is this property? Is is it an apartment? Is it a building? Is it an office maybe? Is it a bungalow? Is it a detached house, semi-detached house? Maybe it's a garage you have for, for rental. So basically these are all your different categories where you set up uh, the type of properties. So let's go ahead and create a few here. Let's say apartments. Add new. Uh, apartments, bungalows, maybe, uh, detached house, or villas, 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 maybe, yeah. And then we can have offices, and then maybe lands, if it's just the land. And what else could we have? I don't know, maybe garages? Sure, why not? Okay, so these are a few options we have, obviously, you know. And then, yeah, obviously, we have a house as well. Houses. There you go. 
So these are basically all our different uh, types of properties now available. So houses, carriages, lands, offices, villas, bungalows, and apartments. So this is how you can create those different property types. So very simple. Now we have property status, as you can see here. So let's click on this. So what are property status? Basically, it is for rent or for sale or maybe for lease. So this is the type of uh, rental agreement or sales agreement, which are it is. So you're going to type in maybe for sale. So this is one. And then we have for rent. And maybe if you have a commercial lease. Commercial lease. There you go. So these are our property status. And then property features. What are the features? So basically these are all the mud cons in the property. Someone is going to rent or purchase. So it could be central heating, air conditioning, and so on. So let's create a few here. So let's put central heating. Uh, air conditioning what could we have laundry room what else could we have a uh, swimming pool maybe all these would be features basically you know available uh, in the property itself and maybe garage could have a tool shed who knows and things like this. So these are basically all the selling points that you want to emphasize on your property listing. And then we have our property label here. So what's a property label? Basically, it's a label that will be on top of your property on the listing on that you're going to use basically to draw attention to that property specifically compared to others. So it could be on sale or special offer, price drop maybe, or first time buyer, uh, new property or something like this. So let's just create a few here. So sale maybe, price drop, first time on the market, and uh, maybe new, new, let's say new, Okay, so basically these are uh, things that you'd like to emphasize on your listing page just to draw the attention to it basically, you know. So I uh, just notice here you have set background color for the label so you can have different colors obviously. So if you were to select a color, let's make it vibrant so it will stand out. So maybe on the red side, a bright red maybe would be ideal for this. So now you can just save that. Yeah, I think I saved it here. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's when you create it, actually. When you create it, you have to select the color. So what you need to do now is to edit this and then select the color from here. So sorry about that. I skipped a step here. So this is our color. Control C, update. So you can have different colors, basically, for all these different categories. So as you see, as you've seen here, new one is a color. It's red. Now, if I go back to the category, first time on the market, I could have it blue, for instance. So let's make this one blue. There you go. Update. And then we can have the other one, maybe price drop. We can have it in red as well, maybe. This would be, wouldn't be too bad. There you go. Update. When it's rated to price, you probably need a vibrant color and sale. We could use maybe on the yellow side, maybe a, a rich yellow like this, maybe. There you go. So this is how we create our label. So now we have everything set up. We have all our property type, status, feature, label, and the uh, location sorted out. So we can now create our new properties, uh, add new properties to our listing. So how do we do this? As you can see, of all properties or add new, so either of them because we have none yet at the moment. So if you click on all properties, you can see this is empty at the moment because we didn't have 
anything yet and we'd need to create a new one. Now, before we add our properties to the website, to our listing, we'll have to configure a few different options again, a real estate options here, click on this. And then we're going to define what a measure uh, unit of measure is. Is it square meters or is it square feet? So depending on where you are located in the world, you might be using square feet or it could be square meters. And if you're using a different unit, you can even select custom units and then you put whatever measurements that you're using right here. So make sure you have this set up before you go and add a property. Otherwise, the measurements will be all messed up. So then when you finish, you click on Save option. And from here, we are ready to add a new property. So just click Add New. And this is basically the screen where we're going to enter all the details about our property. So let's say we have a five bedroom house in the countryside. Why not? There you go. And here you could put your description. So your description goes here. Now it doesn't have to be too long. You don't have to put all the details because some of the details are actually already part of this page. I'm going to show you now. So let's discover this page. As you can see, of property types, property status, property features, property label, and all of these as well are added uh, features that will be displayed on your property page. So there's no need to actually uh, list everything here in the description because this will be taken care of automatically by this system. It will display online everything online for you because basically this plugin will take all these bits of information and put them together as a nice layout and present it nicely for your visitors. So basically what we need to do is just tick all the boxes that uh, relate to this property. So as we see, this one is a house and we're going to click houses. This one, let's say, is for sale. Or let's put it for rent. For rent. And what are the property features? Well, this one has central heating. It has a garage, has a laundry room, no swimming pool, but has a tool shed. Now, let's say this property has a feature that's not listed yet. You can add it immediately from here without having to go back into all the options. So let's say if you wanted to add something new here, I'm just going to create here and I'm going to put dishwasher. Okay. So as you can see, we now have dishwasher, uh, microwave. Why not? Microwave. And maybe I would just leave it like that for now. <clears throat> there you go. And uh, this is it. So property label, you have to select one or you can, if you don't need a label, you don't take any of those options. But because uh, of our tutorial, we're going to take all the options possible. We're going to put new. So where is this located? We select our town, uh, state, sorry. So I'm going to put County Leitrim and then we select uh, Carrick and Shannon maybe. We don't have a neighborhood, so we just leave as is. So as you can see here, this is absolutely fine. And then we're going to add a few pictures. So how do we do this? We click on this and set featured image. So click on this. And from here, you are presented with this screen. So from here, we just click upload files. And we're going to select the files uh, related to our property. So you have them somewhere on your hard drive. We're going to use those pictures and upload them on the server now on our hosting. So then from here, all we have to do basically is click select files and go to the folder where our pictures are located. So I went ahead and downloaded a few pictures here. So I don't know what that is. So let's click on this, click open. And as you can see, our picture has been uploaded now. So you might want to give it a title, you know, for SEO purposes. So let's say if the property is located, let's say in Carrick on Shannon, you might put that actually five bedroom house, Carrick on Shannon. Because if someone types in on Google, they might be looking in the picture section immediately and that picture will come up so they'll know immediately what this is related to and this will help you to rank as well uh, in Google search results. So this is our featured image as you can see with that house now. So this is a five bedroom house in the countryside. 
And at any time when you're working on this, uh, don't forget to save. So it's not called save here, it's called publish. So once you're happy, you can click publish and it will save uh, the wor your work basically. So let's carry on now with the, uh, the description of our property here. So we have the price. So let's say this one is going on the market for 650. 650 what is it? Thousands? Million? Billion? Mm, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Billion. So let's say 650 thousand okay and then you have the before price oh no sorry we said this was for rent so i'm just going to put change this now none and let's say this is going for maybe 1500 a month okay and before price label so starting from for instance and this is per month so 1500 it will be obviously per month so let's put it this way so price on call is is when you don't want to display the price so basically they'll have to ring you to find out how much it is so if we were to click this the price will, won't be displayed on the on the listing so we have the size here as you see uh, as you can see we selected square meters now it could be square feet it's up to you so i don't know i'm going to put uh, 420 uh, the land it could be uh, uh, 1,100 square meters. So we have five bedroom. Oh no, rooms, sorry. How many rooms? So let's say all together, 12 rooms. We have five bedrooms, maybe three bathrooms. We have one garage. And the garage, it's in square meters. So let's say maybe 80 square meters. When was it built? So let's say it was built in 2010. And you can have your property ID here as well. So if you have your own listing, uh, you can have a cross reference here and put the property number here or whichever it is. You can add additional details by simply clicking add more. So we're not going to do this now. We're going to keep it simple, you know, and mark this property as featured. If you put it as featured, you have an extra label that says featured, but we're not going to use this, uh, use this for now. So uh, you can always save, as I said, so click update and then location. So let's go and click on this now. So as you can see, we have Google Maps here. So it's not set up now. We're going to do uh, this in the next step. So don't worry about it. Uh, for now, we're just going to leave it as is. So floor plans, enable floor plans, yes or no. If you have a floor plan, you can uh, floor plan, sorry, you can upload pictures and everything and show that immediately from here. So it's a very comprehensive comprehensive solution. I don't have any floor plans to upload, so I'm just going to click no for now. So gallery image, what is it? Is if you have more than one picture, as you've seen, that's this is our main picture. Then maybe you want to show the internal pictures as well. So how do we do this? Add image, upload file, and all we have to do basically is to select files again. And then select those pictures so you can select more than one if you hold the control key at the same time as you click on the pictures so i'm going to click on control here and i'm going to select this one this one and this one so this is internal pictures from inside the house as you can see we have the landing here and then the stairs and maybe the kitchen so we're going to select them all as you can see you have tick marks for each one of them so if you want to select a picture select the picture select the picture basically they all be selected as you can see together so hold the control key again control key and then select multiple pictures so use these images okay and then we're going to click update and then we have a few other options here as you can see with property video if you have a video available you can upload it here uh, you can use a YouTube video as well. And then your virtual tour is the same again, obviously, you know. And then if, if you have agents working for you, you can create agents here. So let's create a new agent. Add new. So as you can see, this is opening a new page for us. So <clears throat> I'm just going to put John Doe maybe. And then uh, John Doe, let's say... So John Doe estate agent for County Leitrim maybe. There you go. He's the guy in charge of County Leitrim. 
and then you can have description profile email address and everything so i'm just going to put here estate agent i'm just going to put john.do at gmail.com and we put a mobile number zero one two three four five six seven eight uh, company name uh, do j do limited the address so maybe 115 street name license can put a number and maybe his website so johndo.com and then we can even have a picture if you wanted to so let's select someone's face so let's say this is john doe hello john how are you doing doesn't smile much does it but anyways <laughs> let's say this is john doe okay so we can close this now and then again if we call update we can select our agent normally if we scroll down as you can see john doe has been added so we're going to do this we're going to add john doe as our agent and then with private notes so private note is the a note about the property so these are internal notes obviously so no one will have access to this so you could use this actually as your own system to take care of your properties and if you wanted to leave internal notes uh, between staffs and yourselves uh, you could leave it here so i'm just going to put private note close here that's it we're done guys that's our property sorted so what does it look like very exciting now what what does it look like okay so all we can have a preview now so all we do is just click preview changes and i'm going to do this in a new tab so there you go so as you can see this is our property page so if we scroll down as you can see with all the different sections as we said so basically you have a five bedroom house in the countryside 1500 per month for rent as you can see this is the property id 402 uh, 420 square meters five bedroom three bathroom you can print this if you want to you can compare you can have more than one listing and these are our pages i can see uh as you can see the pictures are not very crisp or sharp those pictures are uploaded are not high resolution but when you upload pictures make sure you have high resolution picture this is much better indeed so you can either click on these icons here, thumbnails, or you can use the arrows here on top. It's all the same, you know? So it's very easy for your visitors to actually go through all these different pictures one by one. So we have our description here, as uh, we mentioned, a very short description because everything is uh, displayed here automatically for you. So this is the address. We don't have Google Maps set up yet, but we're going to take care of this in the next step. And as you can see, we have property ID, the price and so on. All the details are here. And when we'll, once we'll have our uh, Google map sorted in a few minutes, you can, you'll be able to see the map here. And this is our agent that they'll have to contact in order to get in touch with uh, and, and find out about the property itself and uh, maybe ask for a viewing and so on. So next step, as we said, let's go and take care of Google Maps now. Okay, so for the Google API key, we're going to go on to google.com, so on the search engine itself, and we're going to type in Google Maps API key. As you can see, it's coming up in the search results here. So just click on this. Let me zoom in a little bit. There you go. And as you can see, we have the very first link here. It says uh, use, using API keys, map JavaScript API. So this is the one that we need. And make sure it's from Google themselves. So it says developers.google.com. So click on this link here, the very first link. And it will bring you to this page. So it's a two-step process. And as you can see, first we need to create an API key and then we need to create the credentials for it. So as you can see, we have a blue button here. So we click on this next. And this will bring us to a Google Cloud Platform where we can set up our credentials, etc., etc. So as you can see, I already have a project in place here for my personal website, Mr. Web Reviews, 
but all you have to do basically is click on next so let me zoom in again sorry about this a little bit more as you can see we have create project here so you click on this one because you won't have a project normally unless you've created previous projects before uh, like myself otherwise you have probably you have this page would be blank normally so all you do is create project and from here you give it a name so let's call it real estate project and then simply click create after this so again it's going to take a few moments to create this okay nearly there so there you go so now we have our project has been created and now you can see here on top we have create credentials so this is step number two so we have our project created with the and now we need to create the credentials so all we do now is click create credentials and what we need basically for this project is an api key so let's click on the very first one here so this is our api key so what we do now basically is copy this and we're going to use the key on our website so let's go back to our website very quickly and we go into our uh, real estate est uh, options here and if we scroll down as you can see we have google map so we click on this and as you see we can insert our key here so there's already one there uh, which you can use you can't use sorry so just paste it here the key we just uh, copied and there's save option and now we go back to our api key here and we have to restrict the key restrict it to our website otherwise it will not work so now next step is to click restrict key okay so we can give it a name again so we're gonna say real estate api key and as you can see we now have uh, two options to restrict the key so we have application restriction and api restriction we're going to use both of them actually so what we're going to do now just in a second what we need to force is restrict it for a specific website so we're going to click on this and then we have to click add item and we're going to type two different references here so the first one is star as you can see star.yourdomain.com forward slash a star so we're going to type this so star dot and the website we are using it is uh, mr web reviews tutorials.com forward forward slash star so that's one and we're going to add a second one as well so star dot mr web reviews tutorials.com and that's it on its own just like that so these two that's all you need so just type in like this so star dot and whatever domain you registered before atlanta real estate or whatever it was dot com forward slash star and then the second one is star dot your domain name dot com just those two simple as and then we go and restrict the api key now so we need to restrict the key so we click on this and we're going to select the apis so we have to scroll down and look for google maps api so as you can see it's not here at the moment sometimes it will appear sometimes it will not depending if it's already enabled on your account or not in this case it isn't which means that we have to enable that so what we do now is just click save just for the time being and we're going to proceed to the next step so as you can see this is our api key and now we're going to library and we're going to go type in maps and we're going to scroll down and as you can see here we have maps javascript api and this is the one you want to click on so let's click on this and we're going to enable this now so enable again it's going to take a few moments to enable this there you go so we're now done with this and now that this is enabled all we do is go back to our credentials so we click on credentials 
There you go. And we're back to our key. So what we need now is to edit this again and go and enable the Google Maps API in this uh, API key. So what we do is click on the small pencil to edit. And we scroll down again and click on restrict key. And we're going to select our Google Maps API. So where is it now? Maps JavaScript API. There it is. So this is the one. And we're all done now with our Google Maps setup. That's it. Ready to go. So if we go back to our website now, as you can see now, we have no maps uh, visible. Now, if we refresh the page, now bear in mind, it might take a few minutes uh, for the, the API key to be available and kick in. So just please don't be anxious and be patient. It's normal. And then one more thing we need to enable now on our Google Maps APIs here. If you go back to APIs, as you can see, we need to enable the places as well. So places API. So let's click on this now. And we're going to enable this one as well. So enable places. So this is basically uh, to know what's, what are, what's nearby that uh, uh, property, basically. So if we have banks, if we have schools, if we have uh, hotels, maybe uh, facilities and so on. So there you go. So now we have this set up absolutely perfect now. So let's go back to our uh, listing. OK, so I've waited a few minutes here. So if you refresh now, as you can see, it's not displaying the error message, which means that it is actually connecting to uh, Google Maps. It's fine. And I noticed I made a, uh, a slight mistake here. So I'm going to show you guys how to change this. When you go back to your HTTP here, you need to add an extra line, which is this one. Star Mr. Web Reviews Tutorials.com. So your domain name.com forward slash star. So no dot in between. So one with the dot, which is this one, star dot your domain name. And this one, which is star your domain uh, dot com forward slash star. So these are all more similar, uh, but slightly different. So there you go. Uh, let me zoom in very quickly so you can clearly see what's written here. So there you go. So you have to add those two lines. I missed this one. So once you have those three, Google Maps will work fine. So let's go back to our uh, page here. So as you can see, it's not displaying. So if we go back to our page, uh, the property page, our settings here, click on this. Now, if you scroll down, uh, as you remember, all we had basically was the location, the province and the town. So obviously Google Maps cannot find it because there's not enough information. So what we need to do basically is to click on the location here. There you go. And as you can see, it's pulling up any information out of uh, the database because it, there's no address yet uh, attached to it. So what we need to do is put the actual address. So let's put a full address here. So let's go with something simple, maybe Main Street, Carrick and Shannon, County Litrim. And we're going to put the, the air code, the zip code. So N41FK33. And then we're going to save this now, update. So click update. And then if you go to our property page now and refresh the page. As you can see, we now have the address 17 Main Street, Carrick and Shannon County Litrim. And if you scroll down, as you can see, all the details are here with the zip code. And now we can click on open on Google Maps. So if your visitors were to land on your page and click on this, they'll be, able, they'll be redirected straight to Google Maps, as you can see. And if we uh, zoom in a little bit, as you can see, we have this red pointer here that shows us where it is located. So if they were to use your website, open your website on their phone, they'll be redirected straight to Google Maps and get directions from there. So very convenient indeed. So this is how we do that. So this is taken care of now. So what's the next step? OK, guys, so normally at this stage, you should upload all your properties before we can go to the next step. So whether you have 10 or 100 properties, Take your time now, upload them all on the website one by one. Obviously, uh, I can't do this live here during the, this tutorial. You know, it would take way too long. We'll end up with a five hour tutorial. Uh, thankfully enough, this Essential Real Estate plugin, they provide a ready-made uh, sample data that we can import. So what I'm going to do in the next step, I'm going to import those data as well. So feel free to do the same if you wanted to have sample data imported on your website 
or upload your own listing right now it's up to you i'm going to add this step now we can follow along but you don't have to do it obviously this is just for our tutorial now feel free to do it if you wanted to have them already and work from them and see how it works but it's really up to you so let's go and import the data now okay so for this we go on google now and just look for this uh plugin so as you can see, we type in essential real estate and it's the very first one here coming up. So make sure it is the wordpress.org uh, website. So click on this. And as you can see, if we scroll down, we have a sample data demo, which is this one here. So what we're going to do is just download this one. So uh, and then we click uh, save link as right click on the link itself, save link as. And we're going to save this on our hard drive and then click save. I already, already downloaded it, just click OK, next. It might prompt you with a, a warning here, just say keep, and that's it, we have a sample data file. And then the next step, we go back to our WordPress dashboard, and from here, we're going to scroll down and go into Tools, and then Import. And as you can see, I have WordPress installed now, so if we click on this, And then click Run Importer. Okay. And from here, we're going to select our XML file. So we're going to point this to the file we just downloaded. So choose file. And where is this one? It's sampledata.xml. And then click Open. And then all we have to do now to import all the sample data is just to click on Upload File and Import. And now it's going to do its thing, obviously, you know. Uh, we are prompted here, it says uploading 0%, so it's going to take a few moments, obviously, so be patient again. And there you go. So here we need to select who's going to be the admin for those, so we can select ourselves here. And then we're going to click download and import file attachment. So we want all the pictures, we want all everything to be created for us, so click submit. And now it's going to start importing everything. So uh, bear in mind, this can take up to two, maybe five minutes, uh, depending on how fast your internet connection is. So again, don't be anxious. Uh, relax. It's normal. It's just doing its thing in the background. Okay, guys. So this took quite a long time, maybe four or five minutes altogether, because there's so many pictures, so many media to be uh, uploaded. Uh, and imported obviously so as you can see everything is completed now so if we go back into our properties normally everything should be there so let's have a look properties there you go so this is the one that we uploaded ourselves but as you can see we now have single house near los angeles uh, and so on and so on as you can see a restaurant in austin texas in san diego san francisco and so on, so on, so all very exotic places and nice to see. So there you go. All this is done for us automatically and we can work from there. And uh, again, it's up to you. You can upload your own listing or work from this one. So now the good thing with the import is that it provides us a base to work from. You know, it's much easier to work from something that's existing rather than setting it up all by ourselves. But again, it's really up to you. As you can see here, if we check agents, it's been created for us as well. We have all these agents being created for us. All the different packages have been done and user packages as well. So all this is done for us automatically. So all we can do now is just basically use it and tweak it uh, and use it to our advantage, basically, you know. So what's the next step now? Very simple. Let's go back to our checklist. As you can see, we can now tick this one off. Essential real estate taken care of. So now let's look at our homepage. Let's go and tweak our homepage and make it our own. So we can close this one now. So back to our homepage. So all we do is click on home. So as you can see, our homepage here, uh, this is not our message. This is not our uh, form. This is not our contact number. So we'll have to change all this. So let's take care of this now. So how do we do this? So we go back to our WordPress dashboard and now we click on all pages. And as you can see, these are all our pages. So you have about us, agents, contact, FAQ, home and properties. Exactly like we have here on our menu, on our actual page. 
So these are the pages that make up our website. So if we want to edit any of those pages, all we have to do is just hover on top of them. As you can see, we, are, we have edit, quick edit, trash, view, and edit with Elementor. So we're going to use Elementor here, which is our page builder, basically, drag and drop page builder. Again, no coding involved and very easy to uh, tweak around. So what we're going to do here is just open that in a new tab. So we right click on it, open in a new tab. So this way we can easily go from one window to the other uh, without uh, getting mixed up, obviously. So as you can see, this is our Elementor page. So how does it work? Elementor, very simple. On your left hand side, you have all the different elements, hence the name Elementor, uh, and that can make out a page. So as you scroll down, you can see you have all these different elements that you can use on your page. And on the right hand side, all this is the preview of our work. And then this is basically oh, how our page will look like once it's finished. And if you scroll down, as you can see, these are all our different elements. So how does it work basically? So we have different sections. So as you can see, we have plus and X and those six dots. If you click on this, you can see edit section. So this is a section. Every time you see these uh, plus and X on top of a section. So this is basically the section itself. If you scroll down again, as you can see, if I hover here, we have another section. And then I scroll down to the next one. As you can see, we have those plus and X. This is another section again. So how is this made out? Now a section is made out of different columns as well. So as you can see, if I hover with one column here, edit column, and I click on this one, this is a second column. So I have two columns and each column is made out of different elements. So if I click on this one here, you can see this is an icon list. If I click on this one here, this is a heading. And if I click on this one here, this is a button. So you can have different elements within your, uh, your column. So this is basically how the page is made and built using sections, columns and elements within those different columns. So let me show you very quickly here as well. So you can see here we have a plus sign, which means this is a section that we can fill with something. So if we were wanted to add, let's say, a heading, all we do is click on this, hold and then drop it here. And as you can see, it's highlighted in blue. And if I drop this there, we now have add your heading title here. So we're not going to do this now, but that's basically how you do it. And you can delete it by just right clicking on it. So basically drag and drop. Very simple, isn't it? OK, so first thing first, how do we change our uh, content here? So as you can see, we have a phone number here. So that's clearly not your phone number. You want to change it to your own. So basically click on the small pencil here and what we're going to do is click on this, open it and then we can change the text here, the content. So let's put our phone number 01234 That's what we said. And that and as you can see, it's reflecting back here. You can see it immediately on our preview. This is our number. And if you're happy enough with every changes you do along the way, you can click update just like this. And then if you wanted to change the heading here, so make it your own again. So instead of find your dream home today, maybe you want to say find your ideal home. Home today. So basically you can type your own content, content and text right here. So just type whatever it is that you feel that's important and to your customer base. And the message you want to convey, obviously, that's going to make you stand out compared to all the real estate in the area. And then again, when you're happy, just click uh, save. And as you can see underneath, we have a small piece of text here, a bit of text that we can uh, change as well. So it says here, uh, click the button to change this text, which we did. So you can add anything you want. So maybe uh, over 2,500 properties to choose from in the Atlanta area, for instance. There you go. And now you might think, oh, this is not readable. That's not big enough. Maybe uh, could we make it a bit bigger? Of course, no problem at all. You can tweak everything. Every uh, element can be tweaked 
uh, to make it your own again. So if you go into style now, as you can see, we have the text editor. If you go into typography, so this is related to our font, you can increase the font here. So this is the size, as you can see, and you can increase it by just using this drag and drop feature. So if we increase it, or you can use the up and down arrow here. So this is incremental then, you know. So let's say you wanted it to be about this size, which would be perfect. So we leave it as this. So you can change the color as well. Let's say you wanted it to be yellow. You can change it to yellow or green or whichever color you want. So we're going to keep it white for now. So we're just going to revert back to the color it was. So just select white. There you go. White is fine, you know. So this is basically it. So this is how you can change the text and the content. So let's just click update. And now you can see we have a button here that says contact us. So you want might want to change this to something else, maybe a request a quote, uh, inquire now, or something more personal. Uh, but you have to link it to something, obviously, you know. So at the moment we have a contact page. So how do you link a page to actual to another page? Very simply, I'm going to show you now. So we have a contact page here. So this is the actual page where it is linked to. So if we select the, the URL, Control C, and we go back to Elementor, and you see it says link here. We have a hashtag at the moment, and you replace this with the actual URL you want to link it to. Update. And now if we go back to our home page, if we click on contact us now, it'll bring us to the contact page. So this is basically how you can link a page uh, within the same website. So as we scroll down, oh no, yeah, one more thing, sorry. Uh, how can you change the background image? So at the moment we have this picture here with the purple uh, overlay. Maybe you want to change this. Maybe you want it to be different. So how do we do this? As you see, you can click on those six dots to edit the section itself and then we go into style so this is our actual picture as you can see it's not the same as what we can see here it's because there's a purple overlay basically on top of it so this is our background overlay here if we click on it now let me show you if i drag this down and drag it up so this is fully opaque so you can't see the picture behind so this is 50 percent shade and this is uh, nothing at all. So this, that's just the picture uh, in itself. So it's up to you really, you can change this or you can change the background picture. The reason why it, they added a background overlay is because it's, it makes it uh, easier to read the heading, obviously. If there's more contrast between the text and the background, it makes it easier to read. As you can see, it's not easy to read at the moment because there's no contrast. The colors of the background and the font in white, it's almost the same. So this is why we usually add a background overlay. So let's increase this slightly. Maybe you don't want it to be as dark. Maybe you'd be happy enough with this, the way it is like this. So you can leave it uh, just like that as well. And you can change the color as well, of course. So let's say you want it to be more like blue. There you go. Now we have a blue. Now you maybe your company colors, your business colors are more red. You might want a red color, then, then you go for red indeed. So let's go back to our initial color. Let's go maybe a purplish, like this, a dark purple maybe, just like that. Okay, so this is how you do it basically. Now let's say you wanted to change the background picture here to something else. So what we do is just go back to background, and as you can see, this is our actual picture. So we're going to click on this and we're going to upload a new one. So select file. And this is our picture here. We're going to select and upload. So make sure the picture is high resolution, obviously. So at least 1920 by 1080p. So uh, HD resolution, basically. As you can see, this one is bigger than that. So this is fine, larger file you know so insert media and as you can see we now have a brand new picture in the background which is very nice because it makes it look cozy and comfortable especially for real estate purposes so this is very nice and once we're happy click on update so we have our contact form here as you can see 
need help message us and then three fields and then send a message so how can we change this uh, uh, form so simply click on it so this is a contact form here this is the one and as you can see it's using a short code so what's a short code a short code basically it's when it's linking different plugins from within wordpress into the one page so it's bringing different sets of information into the one page so in this instance it's using wp forms uh, plugin for this purpose here so let's go back to our wordpress dashboard for a few seconds and as you can see we have a tab here called wp forms so if we click on this now you can see we're contact form and the short call the id here is id 19 so let's go back to our page and as you can see it's the exact same so id 19 so this form is this form here so what we need to do now is to edit this form and make sure that the email will be sent to your email address so how can we make sure of this so this is the editor or the form editor and as you can see we have uh, different fields here so we have your name your email message now you can add an additional field if you wanted to you could have phone number for instance so how can you do this so as you can see single line of text and we're going to drag this in between maybe those two and if you click on it you can change the content so we're going to put this we're going to say this is our phone number for instance so in the placeholder text here you put phone number there you go and if you wanted to make it required mandatory you tick this box here okay just make sure we saved it okay and then if you go back to our home page now as you can see we have an additional field that says phone number very nice indeed isn't it so now let's go back to this and make sure that this form once it's uh, filled in when people are going to click submit it will reach your email address so we're going to settings now and we're going to notifications and as you can see here we have a field that says admin email so you want to change this and put your email address here so hello at mrwebreviews.com and we're going to save this now there you go so now if we go on to our home page we can put a name here so john doe his phone number email address and then a message so then we can click send well there you go as you can see we got a confirmation here that says thanks for contacting us we will be in touch with you shortly so this message here you can tweak it as well if you go into confirmation here in your form builder you can see this is where the message is so if you wanted to tweak this around as well and make it your own absolutely fine you can change it and don't forget to save so this is basically how you can create the form and now let's have a look at the email i received on the other hand so this is the email i received as you can see it's been sent by john doe we have his phone number his email address john at gmail.com and the message that was sent through the form so everything has been sent and received immediately so very efficient indeed so now back to our home page now as you can see we have now the listing of our pages so this is basically just a visual help here uh, basically these are just pictures they're not linked to anything this is just part of our template so they just had to put something there to make it look like it's a real estate uh, website obviously so what we're going to do we're going to actually import real uh, properties from our listing now that we have some imported on our website so how do we do this very simply i'm going to show you now thankfully the developers at essential uh, real estate have provided us with a short code that we can use on our page unfortunately it only works with visual composer and we are using uh, elementor here but thankfully i found a workaround solution so we're going to implement this now and i'm going to show you how you can actually put the real uh your real properties actually your, your real listing on your home page and not just uh, fake pictures like we have at the moment so let's go ahead and do this okay for this we go back to our wordpress dashboard and we're going to install one piece of software a plugin again so we're going to plugins add new and we're going to look for something called Disable Gutenberg. 
So just like this, disable Gutenberg. So Gutenberg is the page builder that's built in into WordPress. So we want to disable that to have access to an additional feature from uh, this plugin. So we can install now. There you go. And just click activate. So that's it. Our Gutenberg is disabled now. So what we need to do now is to create a test page just to create the short code that we're going to insert into our Elementor page. So it, don't worry, it will make all sense in just a few seconds. So click on Pages, Add New, type in Test. And as you can see here, we have Add ERE Real Estate Short Code. So Essential Real Estate Short Code. And this is why we had to disable uh, Gutenberg, because if Gutenberg was uh, enabled, we wouldn't be able to see this. And this is what we need. So how do we do that? Very simple. All we have to do is click on this now. And as you can see, you can select among all these different options. We have property, property carousel, slider, gallery, featured, property type, etc, etc. So now we can use this to create a short code that we can copy and paste into our Elementor page or any other page so as you can see, we have properties, property carousel and slider. Let's go with carousel maybe. And how many amounts, uh, how many items you want to display? Maybe let's say six. Uh, the color scheme, let's go with light because our background is white. And you can narrow down your searches as well. So if you only want it, let's say for rent or for sale, you could uh, narrow it down. All you have to do is just click on it, as you can see. And if you wanted to remove it, just click the X to remove it from this, sex, this uh, field. So you can narrow it down to any uh, city as well. So we have Atlanta, we have Austin, let's say Los Angeles. So you can just keep uh, narrow it down basically to different uh, areas as well. So we're just going to leave it uh, broadly open now. Uh, we're going to display all of them and just click insert uh, code, short code. And as you can see now, we have this piece of short code here. So what you do is select this and we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it on our website page. So as you can see, we're going to look here for short code. This is the one. So this is the element you want to drag and drop on our page now. So I'm going to bring this here underneath our title. So as you can see, it's highlighted now. And this is where we're going to drop it right there. And in the short code section, we're going to paste the code. So this is the same code basically that we copied from here. We're going to paste it in this section here. And now we click update. And this is done. So we can now, now we can remove all of this. We won't need it. So we just click on X. There you go. So update again. And if we go back to our page now, home page and refresh. Yes, we want to refresh. And we scroll down, as you can see, we actually have our properties now here, right there being listed straight up on our home page. So these are our real properties that we uploaded on our listing. So very nice indeed, isn't it? So there are different options as well. You can have a carousel, you can have a slider. So let's insert a slider now just uh, to see. So if you go control A, you can delete this now and we're going to create a new short code. So let's go with slider. So uh, what type of slider do you want? So, okay, navigation middle. Let's say this is fine. We're just going to insert short code. Control C. And then let's add another one. So we're going to click on short code. And we're going to bring this just underneath this one. So this is our current short code. It's just below this, just like that. And we're going to paste our short code in here like we did before. We can click update. And we're going to refresh our home page here again. There you go. And just underneath it, as you can see, it's a full picture and you have a slider. So that looks very nice as well. You know, you can use all these different sections. It's really up to you. Now you can leave it. It's fine or you can remove it and just keep your properties. So let's just remove this for now. 
just leave the uh, carousel so we just delete and that's it and again as always once you're happy you click update and then you can go and refresh your page and if you click refresh reload this page as you can see we now have our listing our different properties right here so it's very nice now if someone was to click on this it's actually dynamically linked as well if anyone was to click on this it will bring them immediately to the page uh, description as you can see with all the pictures even the map and everything and the contact page from the agent that they'll have to contact in order to get in touch and inquire about this property so very nice indeed and as you can see you can slide immediately from one picture to the other absolutely beautiful and very efficient so let's go back to our home page now again and let's take care of our next section so this is the about us section in here you'd want to absolutely put something that's uh, related to yourself so put something that's compelling enough obviously that's going to make you stand out uh, something that you think is important obviously to share with uh, your your visitors so what is important for them to know is probably where you're located uh, this is a quick glance on the home page so you don't want to give them the whole background story at this stage you just want to give them uh, the most important bits obviously you know where you're located which area you cover and what your specialties are basically you know and that's basically it and then you can change the picture here as well so you see this is a picture again so we have our two columns different elements so let's say you wanted to insert your own picture here of your own, own offices so you can click on this icon here uh, to edit the, the column and then go into style and as you can see we have a picture here and again like previous uh, like before we can just click on it and we're going to upload a new file so select file and then you select the picture of your actual uh, place your real estate office so i've downloaded one online here so let's open this one as you can see insert media and now we have our own picture and if you click on update there you go now if we go back to our home page as you can see we're going to refresh now it's, it's starting to shape up very well as you can see about us your own picture and all that so it looks it looks very very professional indeed so now let's insert more listing here from our actual database so how do we do this again back to our short code so we go back to this place here again you remember and we're going to add an ere real estate short code but this time we're going to select property so we click on property immediately here or you can have your featured properties all your featured properties it's up to you really but let's go with property for now just click on this so how do you want to display them do you want to display them as a grid as a list or zigzag or carousel so these are different options you can choose from so let's go with maybe let's grid let's select a grid now and you want to display maybe six of them so we have three columns so three across and two rows then okay so we we'll go with this let's give this a go so let's try this now okay Control c and as we scroll down now as you can see this was our listing from before so what we're going to do we're going to delete all these sections we don't need them anymore so click on this the x click on the other x this one again now don't worry if you mistakenly deleted something you shouldn't have deleted you can always go back so let me show you you can see you have the this rounded arrow that's uh, back in time if you click on this you can always go back to a previous point in time so this is our listing here so again we're going to select an element and we're going to add a short code again so I'll click on this and drag and drop and put it just here at the bottom and just drop it and we're going to fill this with our the content of our short code we paste it and as you can see we now have all our properties being listed here so if we update this go back to our page so this is what it used to look like so this was fake content before and now if we refresh we have our actual listing as you can see it looks beautiful doesn't it nicely done and all that very professional looking so as you can see there's a difference between the actual page and the preview so the preview doesn't look very neat 
is because there's no CSS code. So CSS is what's shaping the website and making it look nice uh, within Elementor, obviously. But once you refresh and you go on your actual page, as you can see, it looks absolutely stunning and beautiful. So this is, uh, this is done for our listing now. And again, if anyone was to click on any of those properties, as you will see, it will bring them directly to the property page with all the details being listed there for them. So let's go back to our home page. And then next, all we have to do basically is all these two different sections here at the bottom. So again, we can tweak this around. So let's do this together. So scroll down and then we have our section here. So what are you looking for? Again, as you can see, maybe we can finish this up later because we'll have to link them to something, you know. So you have apartments, houses, offices. And as you can see, we do have uh, properties here being listed that we can link to that. So if you had properties you wanted to link again, all you have to do is click on this and then change the link here. Instead, the, uh, instead of hashtag, you put the actual URL within the website. So you can see we have apartments, houses, offices. Maybe you want to increase that and double that up and have more properties for, for display. So you can dub, uh, duplicate that if you wanted to. So if you right click on this, duplicate. And as you can see, we now have an extra row added at the bottom. And you could change this maybe and put bungalows, lands, and maybe garages if you wanted to. But I would keep it simple, to be honest, uh, the simpler the better. Maybe you should highlight three areas like they have at the moment, and this will be fine. And then again here, you can have all uh, the trust building factors here. So maybe companies you've worked with, uh, maybe uh, famous names. If you've uh, provided uh, services to famous companies, it will add to the credibility and uh, the trust factor, obviously. And then here we have our details again. So it's important to have your actual phone number, as we said. So all you do basically is click on the small pencil, click on that, highlight this, delete, and then type in your number. So we said it was 01234 There you go. And then you can change this and that and that as well. So contact, again, we're going to change the link to the contact page. So we go back to our home page and we're going to click on this contact page here. So and we're going to select this link, control C, and make sure you paste it here properly. So that if anyone clicks on that, they'll be redirected straight to your contact page. And obviously, feel free to change this around. You know, you can change uh, <coughs> these for something else. Uh, request a callback. There you go. And here you can put simply fill out our contact form on our contact page by clicking the link below. For instance, it doesn't have to be that obviously, you know, you can make it your own. So something similar to this, to that extent, you know. So if we refresh now, go back to the home page. And if we scroll down, as you can see, we've taken care of everything. Our home page is almost complete now. We've changed the home, the background picture, our heading, contact us. We have a contact form that's linked. We have our properties. We have our own picture with the about us section, our listing, the different type of properties, and then finally our contact details here at the bottom. So absolutely fantastic. So this is one thing done. So we can go and tick this one off. Home page sorted. Next, about us page. Okay, so our next step is the about us page already. So we're making great progress, don't we? So back to our website here, as you can see, this is our actual about us page as we have it at the moment. So you can see here, there's a background picture with the kitchen and all that, which is okay. I mean, for real estate, it'd be probably better if you had your actual own picture about yourself, because this page is about you. So if we could have actually an actual picture of your premises, I think it'll be more impactful indeed. And then we can change a bit of the text here. This picture here, I don't know what it says. It's maybe too much. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So let's go and have a quick look at how we can change, change this. Sorry. 
So we go back to our WordPress dashboard as always. We click on all pages. And as you can see, this page is the About Us. Again, we hover on top and we're going to select Edit with Elementor. So I'm just going to right click on it again and open it in a new tab. It's just for, it's just easier to go from one to the other, basically, you know. So again, back to this here, as you can see, we have that big picture here in the middle uh, with these people staring at you. I don't think this is nice at all. I don't know what you think, but you can leave it if you want. I personally don't think it's nice, but anyways. And then we have numbers here at the bottom as well. So, uh, okay, let's go and change this. So back here. So the first thing we're going to do, as we said, is to change the background picture here. So how can we do that? Well, simply again, we click on those dots here from this section and we're going to style. And as you can see, this is our picture. And as mentioned before, I mean, this is a kitchen, you know, I don't think this is uh, appropriate. So we're going to change this. So click on it and then we're going to upload a file. So you're going to try to have a nice picture of the front of your premises, maybe or the inside of your a building, maybe your office with staffs working or something like this, something that's nice and compelling and very professional. So I went online and I found a picture here just to give you an idea. So I found this here, an open space office, which might be suitable for this type of environment. So let's just upload this. And as you can see, the size is 2000 by 850 pixels. So try to find a picture that's large enough. It will be resized anyways uh, to the, the width of the of the website. But depending on which uh, devices your visitors are using, it'd be better. The bigger the picture, the better, basically, you know. So insert media. Okay. Okay, so it's taking a bit of time. My internet is gone slow here. I don't know why. So as you can see, now we have a nice picture. We can see people working on computers and all that. We have a cityscape here in the background. So this is related to uh, real estate, obviously. It looks very professional, doesn't it? Now, if you wanted to remove that uh, overlay, maybe it's up to you. So let's go and have a look. So we have this color here. I'm just going to copy this just in case. So we can reduce this. We're at 0.65. And as you can see, this is the actual picture as it is. But now we can't read what it says here about us. This is uh, actually, the, there's no there's no contrast uh, anymore, is there? So what we're going to do is just add a little bit, maybe. Maybe this. Maybe 0.47 will be sufficient. This is enough because you want your visitors basically to see your office because this is going to build trust and credibility. And uh, this is obviously for it's going to build the trust factor, you know. So once you're happy enough with this, we can scroll down. And in here, you're going to put the details about your company. So who we are, our company, etc. So a bit of background story, maybe when you started the business, uh, when was it established, uh, which area, which regions do you cover, and maybe... Uh, as you can see here where it says responsibility, you could have your mission statement or something similar. And you may want to sign it, maybe. You can add a picture as well if you wanted to, you know, a picture of yourself. Uh, this would be nice. So let's say if you were to remove these, let me delete this now. I'm just going to remove this for now. Delete, delete, and delete this one as well. And let's say if we wanted to add a picture of yourself, like, like uh, you, you're the director of the company, it's your business, you would like your picture here in the, uh, in the About Us section. So we click on those nine dots and we're going to select Image. And again, it's a simple drag and drop. So we're going to dra drag it and drop it here. Okay, and we're going to select an image. So we already have a few pictures uploaded at the moment. There you go. And then we could say that well, this uh, lady here, she would be, for instance, the uh, CEO, general manager of the company. So we're going to insert this picture here. There you go. And now we have the, a, a nice smiley face. It's relatable. People know exactly who it is, who's, who's running the show, who's behind that. People like this to see who is behind the, the, the business. You know, there's a connection factor. That's, it's going to increase trust as well. And then maybe you could add a signature here just to emphasize who this is, you know. So let's say we want to add a little something. We can add maybe a text section. 
Uh, so we're going to select the text editor here and drop it here just underneath it. And then we can add the name. So let's say this woman would be uh, Sue Smith. And then in brackets, you could put uh, director. So they know who this is and they know the position as well. So very nice. So you could change the font as well. You could make it different. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do this. So if you go into style and select typography and select the family and you could have it like uh, handwritten, maybe, uh, you know, as if it was signed by hand. So if you scroll down, you have a preview of each font here. You can see this one looks like it's handwritten. All you have to do basically is scroll down one by one. So I'm just going to go with this one here, for instance, you know, and you can see now it's a bit faded, a bit too small. So we can increase the font again, drag and drag this. And as you can see, now we have Sue Smith and it looks like an actually handwritten signature, which brings a personal touch as well. So you can click update. And there you go. That's very nice like this, isn't it? That's more personal, more relatable, basically. Now, again, this picture, as I said, uh, at the outset, I'm not very comfortable with people staring at you like this. So for me, I would just get rid of it. You can replace it with another picture. It's up to you. So let's see if we have other pictures available, maybe. Let's see what we have. Uh, we don't have much here, do we? Okay, well, let's say if you, if you found a nice picture, you can put it there. I'm just going to delete this section for now. Okay, just like this. And as you can see, we have two columns here. So you could put your vision, your mission statement again, just right here. It'd be fine as well. And again, don't forget to save. Click update each and every time when you're happy with your, with your work and your results. So as you can see here at the bottom, let me show you from the front end. If we scroll down, we have all these numbers. So this is good as well to let people know uh, how many apartments you've sold, how many satisfied customers. Obviously, you don't want to make uh, make up these numbers. You, you want this to be real numbers, you know. So whatever you have numbers you'd like to express, you can put them here. So how do you change these figures? Very simple, because as you can see, if we refresh again, let me show you quickly. If we refresh, you can see it's like a counter, basically, you know, there's a starting point and a finishing point and they will go up uh, this way. So basically, if you click on any of them, just click like this and you can see the starting number. It starts from zero and then the ends at one thousand five hundred and fifty. So now if we have the, the apartment sold, so maybe let's say you had only seven hundred and forty one. Which looks very realistic, you know, seven hundred apartment apartments sold. But now you don't want to say apartments or maybe just properties, generally speaking. So properties, maybe it's not just apartments, maybe you sell houses, you sell garages, you sell land, you sell buildings and all that sort of things, you know. So all you do is just change it this way and then click update and that's who sort it. And then let's have a look at how it looks like on the front page, on the about us page, our actual page. If we refresh. There you go. So as you scroll down, you can see a very nice picture, nice background and all, all of that. Very relatable indeed. Who we are with the picture, smiley picture, which is Sue, Sue Smith, the director. And then we have our mission statement, our vision. And then a few numbers here, as you can see, uh, going up and counting up. So very nice indeed. So we can take this one off. I think we're done now with our About Us page. So this is About Us sorted. Next page, property listing page. So our property listing page, let's go back to our website. So let's click on properties. There you go. As you can see, all our properties are displaying, but we don't see a menu on top here. And it's taking all, it's taking the full width. And then if we scroll down, as you can see, we have additional information here that's not required. So it's a bit messy, to be honest. So let's reorganize this and make it look nice. So for this, let me close this page first. So we go back to our page here, so properties. And for this, we cannot edit this page with Elementor because that's the page that was built using the Essential Real Estate plugin. And then we can't use it. Uh, we can't use Elementor to edit that page, unfortunately. But if we click on properties now, click on this, we can still assign what side of layout is attached to it. 
So at least we can change this. So as you can see at the moment, it says full width, stretched. And we're going to change this to boxed. So basically all the margins will be reduced and it'll be increased and, and sent towards the middle, basically squeezed up a little bit. So we can click on update. And if we're going to refresh our page now, it's already better. As you can see, it's much, much better indeed, much neater. Now, as you can see, we have a logo here by the side and... Uh, the reason is because there's no margin on top of the page. So basically all that section here, properties and all the properties should be pushed down the page. So the menu would be visible basically. And we barely see it here. As you can see, all the menu tabs are right here, but it's white on a faded gray background. So we can't read anything. So let's take care of this. So let's push down the content and also we're going to remove this section here, which is uh, unnecessary, to be honest. Now, I know I said at the beginning that there'll be no coding involved, that there's just two small lines of code. We're going to add just two small lines of code, and I'm going to leave them in the description below. So all you can do is just copy and paste them, where I'm going to show you now. So please bear with me. It's not complicated. Don't worry. Don't freak out. It's very easy. You're going to see that. So we go back here now, and we're going to Appearance sorry, appearance and customize. And you see where it says additional CSS. We're going to add two lines of CSS code, and this will change the, uh, the layout of our page, as you will see. So I'm just going to drag and drop this here. <clears throat> there you go. I'm going to copy and paste it. So basically this one here, the first line, div secondary display none, is to get rid of this section here at the bottom. So this will be hidden now. It won't be displayed. And then this one here, uh, the margin top 120 pixels, as I said, is to push down the content uh, towards the bottom of the page, a bit lower down. So to add a margin basically on top between the menu and this section. So if we save this now, publish, and again, don't worry, I'll have those two lines of code in the description below. So you just have to copy and paste them, that's all. And now if we refresh, as you can see, now our menu is on its own. The properties are pushed down a little bit. And if we scroll down, the rest is gone as well. So it's very nice. Now, as you can see, you can scroll from one page to the other. We can click on our properties. So all is fine. So this page is done. So next, contact us page and contact form. Okay, so back to our uh, dashboard here. And then all pages again. And then we set contact page. So again, now you're used to it. All you do is hover on top. And then as you can see, edit with Elementor, right click, open a new tab. And we're going to open this with Elementor. So let me show you what it looks like at the moment. So contact page. And as you can see, again, we have a picture here. That's the uh, inside of an apartment, I'm guessing, you know. So maybe you should put your picture again, just in case, you know, just to bring that trust factor. So we can reuse the same picture that we used before. And then as you can see, we have a contact form. So this is taken care of. I showed you uh, already. So we have that taken care of. The, the message will be sent to you. So I'm just going to show you how to edit these sections here. So again, we're going to click on the small dots here. We're going to style, click on the picture, and then we're going to select the office picture that we had from before, insert media. And as you can see, very nice indeed. So we're going to reduce the overlay. So we had it at 0.47, I believe. So I'm going to increase there you go, 0.47. So that's the exact same uh, shade of overlay we're going to add on top. So this is very nice already. So get in touch. Send us a message. So everything there is fine. You can just leave it as is. Our contact form is already linked to your email address. So we've done that already. So all we have to do basically is just change the phone number. So click on this. Click on this item here. And again, we're going to type the same number. 01234. Five, six, seven, eight, and then change the address. And again, it's just a matter of clicking on it and changing the content here, you see. And then I'm just going to change the email address. Hello at Mr. Web 
reviews.com. And then we have a social media icon. So I'm just going to save again. Don't forget to update every now and then just to make sure. And if you click on those social media icons, as you can see, we have Google, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus and Pinterest. So Google Plus has fallen off the surface of the earth. So we can get rid of this Pinterest, Twitter and Facebook. So let's say you don't have a Pinterest in, uh, account either. Maybe you have Twitter and Facebook. But you also have a LinkedIn account, let's say, or a YouTube account, then you can add new. So all you can do, basically, you can either duplicate it just like that, which is probably the easiest, or you can add a new item. It's up to you. It's both the same. So let's duplicate for now. Click on this. And we're just going to change the icon, basically. So let's look for Twitter. Uh, LinkedIn, sorry. So LinkedIn. There you go. So if you type in LinkedIn, the icon will show up. Click on it. Insert. And now you have your LinkedIn account here. And let's say you also have a YouTube channel. So click on this and start typing YouTube. And there you go. And all we do is just insert. So how do you link these icons to your actual social media accounts? Let me show you. If you click on Facebook, this is the address here, right here. This is your address. So you're going to type in the address, copy and paste the address to your uh, Facebook page. I'm just going to type in here mrwebreviews.com. So this is a link to my website just for the sake of a tutorial here. And one thing you want to make sure to do is to click on that small gear here. And just make sure that the, the option here, open in a new window, is ticked. And why is that? Because when you have someone on your website, you want them to visit your social media. That's fair enough. But you don't want them to leave your website altogether. So by clicking on this link and opening in a new window, it will just open a new window next to your existing website and your website will still stay there. So you don't want everyone to leave your website once they are on it, obviously, you know. So this is the whole point of this. So if we save this, and we go to our page. Now, if I refresh, let me show you what I mean. So basically, this, has, this is our header, our contacts and all that. If I click on Facebook here, so that's linked to my website, Mr. Web Reviews. As you can see, it's opening a new window now. All together is bringing us to another page. And this way, we're not leaving the website. They can easily come back to your website and uh, browse uh, through the different pages. So this is basically it. And then we have our map here. So how do we change this? Let me show you very simple again. Click on this. On the map itself, right here. So you click on the small pencil here. This is going to edit the page. So we said it would be Main Street, Carrick on Shannon County, Leitrim. Okay. There you go. And then you can zoom in or zoom out. So this is a bit too uh, far, I'd say. So zoom in is a small, a smaller number. So the other way around, a, a bigger number, sorry. The bigger the number, the closer you are. That's what it is. Yeah, sorry. That's the other way around. So basically, you could have it this way. This is nice enough. So click Update. And as you can see, this uh, indicates where we are, basically, you know. So this would be our address. And if we go and refresh now, we now have the address to our office based on uh, Main Street, Carrick and Shannon, and it's going to bring us there. So there you go, guys. This is all done now for the contact page as well. Our, so we can tick this one off. So I'm going to show you how to add more pages now as well. So how do you create additional pages? Back to our uh, dashboard here. In, in our Pages section, All Pages, you're going to click Add New. So click on this. And we're going to call this Test Page. Now at this stage, you'll have to click on Edit with Elementor as well. So you have to type the title first. So first type in the title. Make sure the permalink is correct. So as you can see, MrWebReviewsTutorials.com forward slash and then the name of your page. 
So this again will help with SEO and getting found online. So you click on edit with Elementor. And this, this is going to bring us a blank page altogether. So as you can see, there's nothing on it. So now it's a blank canvas. You can start whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Feel free, be creative. So let's say you want to have maybe two columns. Maybe you'd like to have a video on one side and a bit of text on the other. So how do we do this? As you can see, we, we have our blank canvas here. So click on plus. And the first, we're going to select our structure. So what is it? Full width, two columns, three columns, four columns, uh, sidebar left, sidebar right, etc., etc. So let's click maybe on this one here. So we said we're going to have two columns. And now we're going to back, go back to our uh, nine dots here and we're going to select video. So we're going to drag and drop our video here. So this is our video. And now we're going to add some text on this side. So we, we're going to start with the heading title. Underneath the title, we're going to put some text, so text editor, just like that. And maybe we can conclude with the button, maybe a call to action. Maybe this is what you want them to do. So we have button, call to action, just underneath. So just like that. Now, in relation to your video, if you click on this now, you can see you can uh, upload a video a link from a YouTube video or Vimeo or Dailymotion or self-hosted. So if it's self-hosted, basically you're going to upload the video onto the server and you're not going to use any of those uh, media like YouTube and Vimeo. So click on this. So we already have a video here, so we we'll just keep that link, but you just copy and paste the link in here and you have more options as well. You can have autoplay, you can have mute, you can loop, you know, it's going to play over and over. Uh, you can display the controls, uh, modest branding and privacy, etc., etc. So they're very nice indeed, isn't it? Now, our heading here, again, all you have to do is just click on that and so on and so on. And you can always add more sections. So when you finish with this section, if you wanted to add more things underneath, just create a new one. Click on this, add more structure. Or you can immediately drag and drop from here. So if you want to insert a section, drag and drop and drop it here. And as you can, can see, we have two columns. Now, if you wanted to add a column, right click, duplicate, and we now have three columns. So it's very flexible, very easy to do. It's just a matter of getting used to it, you know, but play around with it and you'll get used to it and you'll see you'll be doing great. So that's it, guys. This is how we create an additional page. So we can tick this one up. There you go. And then our next step is to change our menu section, the logo and create a fav icon. So as you can see from our about us section, uh, the menu is easy to read because we, are, we have a dark background, as you can see, you know, but if you go to our properties now, there you can see nothing because it's too bright and there's no contrast between uh, the, the tabs and the content of our menu and the background, which is bright uh, gray. So what we're going to do basically is to add a background color to our menu throughout the whole website. So it'll be easy to read and it will be a, uh, there'll, there'll be a contrast basically. You know? So how do we do this? So back to our WordPress dashboard, we're going to appearance, customize. And we're going to go on to header builder. And we're going to click on properties here as well. Just to have a preview of our page. There you go. Now we're going to click on uh, this item here so we can hide this. There's no need for that. So we're going to click on transparent header because at the moment our header is transparent and this is why there's no contrast. So I'll click on this and we're going to design and we're going to change the background color. We're going to add a background color actually, you know. So as you can see here, we have background, uh, background overlay, sorry, this is the one we need. And we're going to put a color here. So try to select something around in the, in the same color as our menu. So maybe in the darker purple like this, this would be fine. And then once we finish, click publish. And if we go back to our property page, you will see this is much easier to read. This makes sense now, doesn't it? 
and it's absolutely fine with the rest of the website it looks great doesn't it and now if we go to our home page there's no uh, clash there's no disturbance it's fine because this is the same color same layout as everything else so it looks absolutely fine now if you wanted to add a bit of transparency to it maybe so it will fade away with the the background we can do that as well so how can we do this you click on this again and you can see here you can drag and dr uh, uh, drag and drop this a bit to the left so if you bring this to the left as you can see we can still read it on our page there's enough contrast so let's publish we can see on a property page we can read fine but if we refresh here on the home page it will reveal some of the background as you can see it's much much better like this so we can leave it as this uh, as it is now it is absolutely fine now let's go and change our logo let's make it our own so about the logo we go back here now go back to this and from here all we have to do is to hover on top of the logo and you click on the small pencil and it will reveal the logo as you can see here so as you can see we can have different logo for retina devices so what's a retina device it's uh, like uh, the ipad tablets for instance with the high resolution screen or it could be an imac as well or, or all these uh, laptops with the high resolution screen so for instance myself i'm using a 4k uh, display here for my recordings so this means that if i was to click this it would display this icon rather than another one now if you're using a 1080p screen it will use this logo instead so depending on the type of device that your visitors are going to use you'll have a higher resolution uh, file that's being used to display your logo so let's go and change our logo here upload file select file and you go and fetch your logo so i went ahead and found one online so i'll just go and open it so this is a logo i found online avison young so i don't know what it is but anyways i think it's related to um real estate anyway so skip cropping and now we have to click on this one as well and do the same and change it so select the same choose image and as you can see now it's displaying absolutely fine now clearly this logo is too big now it's taking too much space so how can we reduce this basically you have this uh, drag and drop feature here and you have the logo width and you're going to make it as big as you can but not too big you don't want to be your, your you don't want your logo to be too prominent too in your face basically it has to be there but in a subtle way and don't worry i've noticed a lot of people think that the logo is too small but it, it's not too small it's it's nice actually a, a logo that's too big is too shorty you know so uh this is this would be the, the the right size and then click publish and let's refresh and there you go and just like that you have your own logo on your website so now it's shaping actually really well already and one more step is to include your fav icon so we're going to do this now so what's a fav icon so let me show you very quickly here quickly here sorry if you go on, on my website here mr web reviews you see in that corner who have the mr which signifies mr basically it's red uh, white writing on a red background so that if you go in between tabs you know where how to, where to go back to mr web reviews website so this basically helps to identify your website uh, just on the, the tabs from Google Chrome or any other browser, obviously, you know. So all we can do basically is go back here. And you can see here where our logo is on the same section. If you scroll down straight to the bottom, it says select site icon. So basically a site icon and a fav icon is the same thing. So let's click on this. And as you can see, the size should be 512 by 512, so it's square size. So make sure that you fit that into a square and make it nice. So let's go and do this. So let's upload. So I went online and found a random one. So I'm just going to use this now. Let's use this one here. As you can see, AEDP. And again, this is 512 by 512. So make sure it is square and 512 by 512. So select. And now we can publish and as you can see now if we refresh our page very quickly 
we have now our fav icon here, our site icon displaying next to the name of our website. And this will help our visitors to identify where our website is, which tab to click on. So that's it. So we can tick that off now. Menu, logo, and fav icon sorted. We are nearly there, guys, nearly there. So next step is the footer. So as you can see on our website, there's not much of a footer, to be honest, it's just a few details here. So we're just going to change those details and put our own name. So as you can see, I've put Mr. Web Reviews here, but it could be obviously the name of your company. So where is this information taken from and powered by Mr. Web Reviews? And how can you change your, your footer? If you wanted to add links, maybe and short links and uh, things like this, maybe your social media, how can we do this? So let me show you now. If we go into Footer Builder, as you can see, all we have at the moment is Copyright, HTML, that's all. And these are the two uh, elements here. So this is a Copyright, this is a HTML, and they look exactly like this. So Copyright, HTML. Now if you wanted to add something, because you can see we have one, two, three sections here, maybe you want to add uh, a link to your apartments, maybe you want to add a link to your uh, buildings, in offices, maybe lands and so on, and people can uh, click directly on them and go straight to those pages. So how can you do this? But again, all we have to do, it's a drag and drop. So click on the plus sign here, plus, and what do you want to add? So you can add a footer menu, we can add a menu, we can add widgets, and we can add HTML code and even social media. So how do you create a menu? How do you add pages? I'm going to show you now. So add footer menu. Let's save uh, this for now. And let's refresh our page. You can see now we have our menu that's normally on top. It's also in the footer. So it's home, about us, properties, agents, FAQ and contact. Because very often if someone was to open this on their mobile phone, they will scroll, scroll straight down to the bottom and you read information that's in the footer it's also very important so this way now you can have uh, people redirected straight to your different pages so if i was to click on the properties page now i'm in the properties and if i scroll down as you can see i can directly go from here to another page without having to scroll back up again which is very convenient indeed so this is one thing you can do and what else can we add? As you can see, we have social media. So if we click on social media, publish, and we can refresh. So let's go straight to the bottom. And as you can see, we have our same social media that we configured earlier on. We have Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, but you can change this around again, you know. So all you have to do is click on this, social media. And these are our three icons. So what we do is the same as, as, as I said, like we did before. If you don't have any, uh, uh, let's say you wanted to add another one. So let's say maybe LinkedIn, add social media, and maybe YouTube as well. We have YouTube as social media. And if you click on it, just put the URL, the link to your uh, social media account, publish. And if we refresh, we now have our menu and also our social media. Very simple, isn't it? Now, if this is all you want is those two widgets here, you know, you can just uh, change the location as well and put them on those two columns here, one there and one there. And then if you publish and you save, just let me remove myself, otherwise you won't see nothing. And if we refresh, let me refresh. There you go. Now you can see the evenly spread out and centered in the middle. So it's really up to you, you know, all the same. Or you can put them back the way they were, just like this. One here and one there. Publish. Refresh. And there you go. Okay, so the one last thing we have to take care of is only uh, the colors. As you can see, this plugin here is using orange color and uh, black and orange which clashes completely with our theme background which is purplish and cream so let's go and change those colors now and make it more in tune with the rest of the website right so let's do this now so let's take this box here the footer is done 
and we're going to take care of our final tweaks. Okay, so we can exit of this. And from here, we're going to go into plugins and we're going to add a new plugin, an additional plugin. And in the search box here, you're going to type in ERE colors or essential real estate colors. And as you can see, this is the one we installed. This is our plugin. And we're going to install this one here. And as you can see, this is one to change the colors. Basically, we have three color picker and all that we can uh, customize them. So install. There you go. And then activate. And where is it now? Here, that's the one here. So uh, as you can see, it's installed and uh, enabled already. So let's go and change those colors. And for this, we're going to estate, essential real estate options. And scroll down straight on the page here and you have colors. Okay, so let's go back to our front page. So all the orange here, which color do we want them? Maybe we're going to make them purple. And then the black can remain black. The black is not bad. So we just need to, to change this one, basically. Okay, so let's use this here and make it a bit uh, darker than this. Maybe around this. Okay, save option. And let's go and refresh. Yes, that's not quite the same purple. Let's go and change this a little bit. I think it's more around here, possibly. Okay, save. And then refresh. Okay, that's much better. As you can see, now it blends in. Now it, it fits our uh, website theme and colors. So let's go on our home page and make sure. As you can see, this is absolutely fine. Yes, indeed. Now, there's still a bit of orange left, but that doesn't matter really. It's fine. You need a bit of uh, contrast in your coloring anyways, you know. This makes it stand out. But at least now we have a nice color that fits in and blends in with the rest of our website. So this is very nice indeed. So what else can we do? Just let me check now. Text color. No, this is fine, I think. This is absolutely fine. So we'll leave it at this for now. I think we're almost done. So our last few tweaks, again, as we said, what do we do? We have light speed cache. That's right, light speed cache. So we go back to our plugins. And once you're happy with your website and you're almost ready to go live, we'll have a few uh, tweaks to change. So this is one uh, to do. We need to activate light speed cache, which is this one. Activate. So this is one thing done. And then we're going to remove the maintenance, as you can see here, maintenance. So maintenance mode. We're nearly there, guys. Nearly there. These are the last few steps. And once you're happy, when you're ready to go live and you've double checked everything on your website, you make sure that all the pages are fine. There's no typos. And the prices of your properties are correct and everything is fine. You've tested your uh, contact form here. Make sure it's sending to the right place and you're receiving all these emails. Make sure your phone number and all your details are correct. Once you're happy with that, you're ready to go live. How you do this? Very simple. Click on off, save. And just like that, anyone can see what's happening on your website. So these are the final tweaks. We click on this. We double, we double checked everything. We did. We enabled the light speed cache. We did. We have a maintenance uh, disabled. We have. Now, guys, there's only one thing left to do is to tick that box here, have a drink and celebrate. Congratulations. Well done to you. You've done really well. I wish you all the best with your website. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.